Uh, before the impeachment happened, uh, news has it, uh, close sources has it, that on Monday around 10.45, Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa received an important call. And at uh, the time, he's actually gathering around his close family and his legal team at his office in current residence, uh, preparing for his address to the nation, uh, National Assembly. Sorry, uh, During this uh, impeachment, uh, impeachment proceedings uh, the following day. And of course, when you are in distress, as a man in distress, and uh, someone calls you and it's someone that you you have been working with now kuna noma pale kazini you always think that maybe they are calling you to just tell you sijali niko nyuma yako but then contrary to their expectations yeah Things he received went, a different message. That's right. The call was from his number one, that is the president. And uh, Mr. Gashagwa and Ruto had not spoken since the last time they had met at JKIA in July. That's number one and number two of your country, mm -hmm. not having spoken for months. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Gashagwa would uh, later reveal that that encounter on the uh, in July did not end well. Mm -hmm. And neither did this phone call. It only took about one minute before he found out that um, the end was clear for Mr. Gashagwa and he was on his own own. Mm -hmm. Multiple sources close to the DP and familiar with uh, the events told the nation that prior to the call, Mr. Gashagwa had sent emissaries to try and of course cool down the tensions mm -hmm. and perhaps uh, broker a truce between him and the president. But the State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed said he was not aware of any delegation mm -hmm. that went there, whether it's church leaders or any phone calls. And he said that the president has no role in the ongoing issues. And of course it emerged that later on Sunday on the same day, Mr. Gashagwa publicly sought forgiveness from uh, his boss and MPs at a church service and President William Ruto had met a group of religious leaders who were on a mission to reconcile the two. And of course, we had Catholic Bishop Anthony uh, Buheria, SEK Archbishop uh, James Olesapit, SDA leader Samson Nyaberi, and leaders of evangelical churches were among those who uh, spearheaded their efforts to broker a truce between the DP and the President William Ruto. And of course, uh, the clerics seem to have not found... Uh, they did not arrive at an amicable solution because if that was the case, then maybe the president would have extended a hand mm -hmm. in uh, trying to uh, talk to the uh, MPs and tell them, you know what, to na na mambo yetu, but uh, hold uh, uh, hold on, and we'll, we are going to just make sure that we get to sort it out. Don't vote uh, against the DP. Mm -hmm. That's right. MPs are also very wary of any truces being negotiated mm -hmm. because they say if there was any truce or any coming back together, that should have happened before the matter went before the national. Assembly. Mm -hmm. They say they also thrown under the bus during the finance bill and they were left with egg on their faces mm -hmm. because after voting yes, Bado, it was uh, rescinded, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't want a repeat of the same. The hashtag is morning fix. Let us know of what you think of uh, these, you know, coming, these uh, ongoing efforts to impeach the deputy president. Of course, the Senate hearing will be next week. Do you expect the, the Senate to vote for his impeachment or against?